everybody, welcome to another episode of Kitty Crow Creations. I'm Katisha. Today we're going to be painting another flower. Well, it's actually a seed. It's a seed from the dandelion flower. So we're just going to go ahead and call it the, da the dandelion flower uh, tutorial. But um, today we're going to be painting it and we'll be focusing a lot on water drops because it's a dandelion seed with water drops. And um, I hope you enjoy it. Feel free to hit the subscription button and the notification button so you can be informed about uh, forthcoming art tutorials. I look forward to you getting involved. Feel free to go onto my website, www.kittycrowcreations.com to share your, your pictures, your comments. I look forward to all of that. Once again, thank you and come along in the journey with me. Bye. <music> Hi everyone. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with the lesson. Like I said, today we're going to be painting a um, dandelion flower. It's mainly the, the seed of a dandelion. And um, and it has water droplets on it I, I, or, or raindrops. It's probably raindrops. It could be just water from, from the mist or water from a water hose, whatever. But it has water droplets on, on it. And we're going to spend some time focusing on that. And I would say this is a kitty, I, I would say this is still a kitty level one uh, painting because it's not really intricate. It's just, it's just not even so much time consuming. We, we will be spending a little bit of time trying to um, get the detail of the, of the water droplets, but that's perfectly fine. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm working with an eight by 10 canvas. Um, I have not had a chance to sand it, so I'm going to go ahead and get my handy sandpaper and get it sanded, and you should do the same. If you're smart, you would already have it sanded, so I'm just going to go ahead and sand it. And I'm using fine sandpaper so I can really get that smooth. And you have to keep in mind what you're dealing with here. This is canvas. Canvas is material that you can buy at a craft store, you can buy at a fabric store. As a matter of fact, I think I, think I have like six yards of canvas. Where someone took, the way they make these canvases, they take canvas, the material, and they gesso it numerous times to, um, to prevent it from being so absorbent. So the paint will stay on top, obviously. And that's all that this is. This is just um, canvas put on um, a frame. But... When it gets dry, it could so it could soak up a lot of paint, and we don't want that. Um, so if you sand it and smooth it out, or even if you just put a little water on it, or, or pre or pre paint it, it'll help. It'll help um, your your paint going better, and it'll prevent it from absorbing so much of your paint. Okay, so I sanded that. I have a a paint palette, which is actually this is a um, this is paper palette. And you can, uh, I like using this because you can, when you're done, you can just uh, discard with it. And uh, you can buy it at Michael's, 
Hobby Lobby are my favorite place in the whole world. Jerry's Artorama. I wish we had one here in California, but we don't. So, um, so I have that. And my brushes I'm using today, I'm going to use my, um, this is a five, this is a five eighth inch uh, ruby satin silver angle brush. I'm also going to be using that brush I'm going to put to the side. I, I I might use this. This is a, um, this is a, I think a, it's hard to tell what this is. I know it's a number, a number six round brush. We might use it. Um, I doubt it, but I'm just going to put there, I'm going to put it there just in case. I might need it for my raindrops or my water drops. And we might use this liner brush. This is a, um, it's hard to, to tell them we have my glasses. This is a number two liner brush. And also my, um, I'm, I'm missing an angle brush. You have to forgive me. Oh, here it is. I just thought I had it. And then also my favorite, my all-time favorite, what I just, what I just used, I finished doing another tutorial and I did the complete tutorial on a, a 11 by 14 canvas. This is a 3 8 inch angle brush by Ruby Satin Silver. I got introduced to these uh, paint brushes from a ginger cook who has her own um, art um, YouTube channel. And I used to look at them like, what is she using? And pretty much on almost every paint painting she does, she's, she's using these brushes. I'm like, why is she using these brushes? Now I know why. They're not too soft and they're not too firm. They're just right and they're perfect for painting with acrylics. So I have this, this big brush here big angle brush, but we're not going to use that. So I'm just going to put that out the way. But that's basically what I have. Okay. Usually when you see me paint, I always start off with a traceable and I transfer it on. But in our last tutorial, I mentioned that there's going to be times where we're just going to, we're just going to draw it on there. Especially when it's something as simple as this, where it's just a couple of lines and some circles. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to make the background. Um, our colors, what I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to talk about the colors as I put them on. So our first two colors that we're going to use for a background is going to be a combination of phthalo blue. And then we're also going to put some phthalo green. I'm going to put some cad yellow medium. And I'm also going to put some titanium white. Um, or better yet, you know what? Yeah, I, I will use some titanium white. I'll start with some titanium white, but if it looks like it's too, too opaque, I'm going to um, move to the zinc to make it more transparent. And I'm trying to put my colors on the edge so I will have room on the, um, on the inside. So let me go ahead and mix the colors. I'm going to mix... I'm mixing some um, some uh, yellow, I mean, thalo, uh, thalo blue and thalo green. And it makes what's called, um, it's called an ocean, almost like an ocean blue color, which I have ocean blue. But why use ocean blue when we can just mix these two colors? So I got that. I'm going to put a little, I'm going to put a little bit of white. And that's going to start my background. And I'm going to kind of. I'm just going to kind of go in on an angle like that. And what I want to do, that is not enough paint. What happens is that when we don't put enough of paint, we struggle to get the paint on there. So that's too green. So I'm going to put some more blue. And so now see now that's better. That's no struggle at all because I actually have paint on my brush. So that's, so I'm just going, I'm going, in and out, in and out, in and out. And you know, it's interesting about our dandelion um, of flower that we're painting or the dandelion seed is that, did you know that they could be, uh, when, they're, when they're blown certain distances, that they can go out as far as five miles? That's crazy. Absolutely crazy. It's a beautiful flower, but man, when it turns to seed, it gets all over the place. So I'm just putting some, just mixing some more colors. And I like it when it gets that marble consistency where, um, where the paint is not completely blended all the way. I like that. 
and I just love that. I in the, my last tutorial, I was mentioning how much I love phthalo blue. The color is just so rich, and then the phthalo green is nice too. Um, I, I had been talking about the fact that um, a lot of artists they stick with the um, the primary colors. There's an, there, there's an artist, his name is uh, John, I think, Lissandra on YouTube. Oh my goodness, his paintings are gorgeous. And he just uses the, the you know, the, the regular primary colors and probably some burnt umber and um, maybe some burnt sienna or whatever, you know, anything like that. But he, oh, I see, I need some more phthalo blue. And I'm only using it, I'm only using an eight by 10 canvas. And you see how it's soaked, it's soaked up that paint. And it's because we're, I'm using economy economy brand uh, canvases. If this was like Fedrick's uh, canvas or something like that, it, it probably wouldn't absorb much paint. Or even if I would have made my own uh, canvas it pro and, I, and I could pre-gesso it the way I wanted it to, it probably would take up less paint. But I'm okay with buying the economy size one and then, and then working around that. That's okay. And I put that... And in all my tutorials, I keep telling you, colors like phthalo, phthalo blue... Phthalo green, dioxazine purple, quinacridone magenta. You don't get really get to see their, their beauty until you add white to them, I feel. So that's why you see me adding white, because only if you if you if you need for them to be dark, but even when they're dark, you really can't see the beauty. I'm gonna put a little bit more green in there because I feel like. Okay, I'm trying to rush before the paint dries, because I want to blend in some yellow in the middle. But you can you can slow down that process by using some blending medium. I should have should have brought some blending medium and I didn't, and oh well. Okay, so now I'm dry brushing, barely touching it. I'm dry brushing the middle with yellow. Because is trying this yellow is gonna make sure that that the raindrop or the water drop um, is going to be the focal point of this of this painting. Put some more yellow. And if I'm and if also if I'm correct, the dandelion, a lot of people consider it to be a weed when it get mainly when it turns to seed, which if it's a nuisance because it's flying all over the place. I can understand that because to me that's what a weed is. It's a it's it's a plant that's a nuisance. And as I was saying in my last as I was saying in my last tutorial, I just recently developed a, a green thumb. Obviously, not literally a green thumb, but developed some um some knowledge about planting and growing plants and vegetables and taking care of trees and all of that. I'm going to come around and swirl it around a little bit. So I really want that middle part to stand out. With that yellow. And I feel like, let me get some more of that, that uh, thalo green and thalo blue mixture and some white. Because I really want to blend that in with the with the yellow. No harsh edges. No harsh edges allowed. Okay, we're not going to spend a lot of time on this background because that's all that it is is a background. Okay. All right. Um. I have um. Some of the other materials that I'm using for this for this art tutorial, I have a water a water bucket and it has these ridges in it, and I love it because you can clean your dirty brush on this side and use the ridges to get all the paint out of it, and then come over here in the clean part and then make sure you really clean it. I love it. Okay, so more than likely we're not going to be using this this brush anymore, so, uh, so we're going to put that to the side. And so now I'm going to blow dry this. I'm going to move it over a little bit this way and I'm going to blow dry it. And then we're going to go ahead and start transferring on the, um, the 
the picture. Or rather, drawing the picture, because we're not transferring anything. And usually, um, some people will um, they'll just kind of walk away, go get a cup of coffee, and then come back to this when it's dry. But I figure, why do that when we can dry, uh, dry it with a blow dryer to speed up the process? And that's what I like about acrylic paints is that you can um, is that you can um, speed up the process of getting the project done by using a um, a blow dryer. So we're going to go ahead and draw draw the picture, okay? So I think it's about four, I don't know, four, I would say about six fingers over from the edge is where we want to start our first drawing. So that's where we want to start our, um, our stems. So I'm going to go ahead and draw it. What I'm using, this is a charcoal white pencil. And technically, you shouldn't use charcoal to draw anything on your on your canvas, but I can't find my chalk. But they have chalk um, pencils that you can use, and I would highly I highly suggest that you use that. But the reason why I love these is that they go on, they draw really well. That's what I love about them. So we're just gonna get our drawing going here. You can make it as thin as you want, or you can make it as thick as you want. And so it kind of goes like that. And then we start making our circle. Make it. I'm trying to, I'm left, I'm left handed. So I'm always constantly trying to move my, my hand around so you can see, see what I'm doing. Trying my, attempting to make a circle as circular as I can make this. Okay, that's going to, that's going to be good enough, doesn't it? I'm not looking for perfection at this point. And I'm going to kind of make a like an arch right here, kind of. Now, now, so now we're going to start making our. Um, to me, that's still not circular enough, but I'll I'll make up for it when I when I start coloring it in. Okay, so now we're going to make our um, our I guess you can say our dried up leaves or our parts of our flower that have dried up. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to start at the base and we're going to go out with the first one. And this doesn't have, you don't, I mean, it's not pre precision. You don't have to be too perfect with it. We're going to come out. We, we kind of want to come from the base. We're going to make another one. This is so much easier with chalk. And then we're going to make another one. We're just going to keep going and going and going. And I'm, I'm going to go ahead, go ahead and go over and start this side. And then I'm going to start this way. I don't know if you can see because my hand's in the way. But I want to make sure I get, get it from that base right here, from the base. Try my best to angle it because they're angled. I'm going to make another one here, coming back down to that base. And then we're just going to start having some come out. And I think, I think that'll do for right now. And we can just add the other ones later. Okay, so that was that was simple, right? Okay, so we got that. That was simple. So I'm gonna put that away. And now what we're gonna do is that we are going to start working on the inside of our um, our first petal. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, actually, I I, I want to back up. Let's go ahead and start working on the um, let's work on the stem. We're gonna start off that stem with some yellow ochre. I'm going to take out yellow ochre. And then also I'm going to get some, um, some burnt umber. And it's not really much to the stem at all. I'm probably going to take out a little bit of Mars black to darken, darken up this, this color of the stem. So we can get that outside edge to start. You know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not going to struggle with that cap. That's the thing about the, the golden paint. It's hard to get the cap back on when it's got paint, so I really should really clean those out. But I'm not worried about that right now. So I'm going to get some burnt umber. 
I'll go ahead and put it over here on this side. And then I'm going to get some Morris Black. You know, my um, I had been talking about the um, artist from the 1600s. She was from the Netherlands. Her name was Clara Peters. And her attempt to get recognition as an artist was... A main, was a phenomenal. It's like she would paint images of herself, like a reflection of herself in her, in the wine glasses and the wine bottles of her artwork. That's that's for for one. That's in, is brilliant, and for number two, that's very intricate. So we have to applaud her for doing that because that's amazing. Okay, let me go ahead and mix the colors. So I'm going to take some yellow ochre and some burnt sienna because I'm trying to get the darkest color. Remember we've been talking about when we do acrylics, we want to start with the darkest color we can get. And then, um, and I like the way it's got that marbly effect to it because we're going to put yellow ochre, put some yellow ochre back in there anyway. So it's got that marbly effect. And if you're not happy with your, um, you, if you think that this is too thick, you can thin it up by going back and putting some more of this background color and thin it up, which I might do later or which I might do once this dries. Okay, so now I'm just going to put some yellow ochre on there. I'm just barely brushing over the top of it. Yeah, I, I really feel like that stem is way, too, is way too thick. So I'm going to thin it up at the end. And that's okay, because when you're freehand drawing something, I mean, you, you have to make some changes. Okay. So I got that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put out some more white because my white has been has been contaminated with the blue. So I'm going to put some more out. Put it right there. And these these caps are something else. I'm telling you, they don't want to go back on. So now I'm going to put I'm going to mix some white with that color. I'm going to come over here and try to. Actually, I want more of the yellow ochre, but I want it light. I'm going to try my best to make it. I'm just trying to lightly go across the top. Just lightly. Because there's some light coming in from, from this direction, so... trying not to get rid of all that dark color in the background. And then I'll come put this other lighter color on top of that. So I just dried that off. And so now I'm just coming back and blending it together. And I was going to come over and put the dark on that side. But for right now, that doesn't matter because I need to, I'm going to come back later and thin it. Thin it, thin it a little bit. So I'm going to come put some, some of this color over here. I think I keep telling you in my uh, art tutorials that you can take this these paintings to to all different types, types of levels. It depends depending on how many layers you want to put in it. The more layers, the, the better your painting will look. Since that's driving me insane, let me put some. Let me put a little white on there. Put a little bit of white right coming down here. The thing I like about when I when I sometimes when you see me painting, I try to do things in sections, and that's something that you should practice doing too. Is doing it in sections. So now I'm putting white. Remember, white is your is your um your brightest highlight. So I'm just trying to kind of put a little bit here and there. And before I go any further with this, I need to slim it up because I don't like how it's too thick. So I'm going to get our, let me see if I have enough of the mixture right here. Let me see. I'm trying to blend it. It, it shouldn't be this thick, so I'm trying to go through and thin it out, and then I'll come back and um, blend in the um, the blue color. Here. Let's 
a little bit more. Probably a little bit. I'm going to try to do it from this side because I don't I know my hand's in the way. So. But just like Bob Ross says, there are no mistakes, just happy accidents. That's the thing about art. You can take anything and turn it into something beautiful. And I'll go back. We'll come back later and fix all this. Since that, you know, that's the background anyway. But now I can I can put my dark color right there because I didn't want to put it earlier because I wasn't finished, you know, refining it. But let me I'm going to put a little bit of yellow. With that color that we just had just a few minutes ago. And just go in and just put some more highlights. On that. So I really, it's really starting to come to life. And then, of course, I'm probably going to go back and put some more white over top of that. Layers, people, layers. I'm just going to put a little white. But anyway, I was saying to Clara Peters, that, that just blew my mind when I found out that, that she did that just so that people can recognize who she was. I'm just barely going over top of this barely and I you know you know I've been saying that um people who are master artists like I'm not a master artist I've been painting for a while off and on for many years but I, I'm not a master at it a master is a person who, who you know spends all their life and their time trying to trying to perfect the skill I do it as a hobby and for, you know because it's fun but um, they, over the years, I'm sure they have mastered how, how when to use light, uh, heavy um, and light pressure on the paintbrush. Now, you see what just happened just now? I'm coming over here putting the dark on the back of this, of the back of the stem. And because of that, it's starting to really stand out. And I'm going to come and I'm going to put some here and there within the, um, within the stem. So it'll actually look like a stem. Okay, so probably need to put a little, I need to put just a little bit over here too. Just a teeny bit. Okay, not too much because that's the light side. But that's our stem. Now on the fun part, we are getting ready to do the big water drop. How exciting. We are going to start off with white. And then we're going to add all kinds of different colors to it. So let's start off with the white. Here we go. Look at that. See, that's why I said I like. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm going back and trying to reshape it into, or to, into a circle. And I may have made it worse than what it was. But what I was saying, that the, the professional paint, you see how thick it is and how it goes on. And I really like these angle brushes because you can turn them every which way and they really they really get the job done. And I'm trying, if you see me, I'm trying to paint in curves because that's the shape that we're doing. We're doing a circle. So that's why you see me painting in the direction I'm painting in. Okay, there are numerous theories about how to paint, how to paint water, uh, water drops. Some people will just give an, 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 uh, an implication of it and then put their colors, colors in. Some people start off with white, like I'm doing. I'm starting off with white, and I'm going to add all the other, other colors to it. So my next color I'm going to add to the middle of that is a little bit, a little bit of halo blue. Actually, I need more than that because it really needs to. You really need to be able to see it. And I'm still going that curved motion. Let me get some more. Come around here. And I'm kind of using light pressure. I'm not really. Where you see it's dark, 
I'm doing using heavy pressure. And in some places, it needs to be dark. So I'm going to kind of make it a little bit dark right there on this here. And over in the top of that, we're going to come over and put a little bit of the green right here. And then when I get uh, when I get to the green and the blue, I try to blend it out. Wipe off my brush, blend it out a little. There we go. And then I know this sounds crazy, but we're gonna um, the dox dioxazine purple is the center point of this water drop. I'm gonna put some dioxazine purple. And, and I say it once, I'll say it, I'll, I'll say it again. We're trying to give an interpretation of what we think our, our photo, our, or even if you're doing real life uh, painting, you're trying to do an interpretation of what, of what you're seeing, trying your best to make it as real as possible. So I'm coming around and putting this purple. Like I said, that purple is going to be the main character in this water drop and all the other little water drops. So I'm just kind of coming around in a curve and then I'm trying to blend it out and there's some up here too and then just kind of blend it in with the rest of the colors. Just blending it in. I just thought that I, when I first did this, I was just like, wow, it's amazing what you can do, do with colors and trying to interpret something. I'm going to put a little bit of white in that. I'm going to put a little bit of white. See what that white does to that, to that doxazine purple? This really makes it stand out. And now I'm going to use the white and I'm going to try to go back around that edge and make it look, give it a highlight. So now we need to go up here in this part and we're going to take some dioxazine purple and just a little bit of burnt umber because for some reason that little color up there is really dark. There must be something in the background up here that's making, because if you think about it, water is it's translucent so it it mirrors whatever is around it. So there must be, there must be something in, in this picture that's that's dark. That's why we have to kind of get all the colors in. Whatever's behind this water drop is dark. So we got that. I'm going to wipe it off and try to blend it in. I'll try to blend it in to the other colors using the edge of my um, the edge of my brush. Let's just blend it. I'm just blending it in. There we go. And lo and behold, it's starting to look like a water drop. I'm going to put some more blue right here because I really feel like it needs it. So I'm going to get some more thalo blue. I'm going to put that in the middle. I'm going to add some white to it. I'm trying my best to lay on, oh, that was something that shouldn't have been, I don't know what that was. I'm trying to make sure I'm being generous with the paint because when you do, it makes it go on better. See that? Now I put the blue and now I'm coming back and adding the white. Okay, so we got that. I'm gonna come back and put some more of the phthalo green because we lost the green. So this green needs to go right there. Okay, so when you see, um, and it's the same with glass too. When you see a water drop, you look at it, you just assume that it's, it's clear. And when you go to paint it, you don't realize that there's all other kind of thing, other components to it. So you're getting to see that right now. So now I'm gonna go and add all the white, add all the white highlights 
and then it'll really make it look like a um look like a um a water drop. But yeah, anyway, that's the that's that's the um that's the thing you have to realize when you're painting. It's like you have to really sit down and you know what you should do? You should just go out and observe nature. Go out and observe nature and look at it closely and then figure out what it is that, that you're seeing. And if you study it hard enough, I'm going to put a little white right there and then put some over here too. Yeah, but if you study it hard, and hard enough, you will see that it's not, it's not what you really think. That's why a lot of people, they're, they're, they're for reference photos, and there's some that are against reference photos. Reference photos are important, I think, especially for me, because you really get to see the reality of what something looks like. Because when you're painting, without a reference painting, you're going you're gonna to make your painting based on your understanding and your knowledge of what you've seen and what you've been told. But that doesn't necessarily mean that that's the way it is. So that's why you need to use a reference. Or look at something in real life. Okay, so I'm going to go and I'm going to add some more purple to that. Let me put some more highlights at the top. Like probably right about here. And right there. But then I still want to put some purple. And it's barely going to come through and put barely put it put it like on the top right there. A little bit of purple right there. Put some more up here. Put some more up here. And when you're doing your painting, if it if it doesn't seem right, it's probably because you need to step away. You probably need to step away a little bit and then come back to it because more than likely it's exactly the way it needs to be. It's just that when you've been looking at it too long, it doesn't look, it, sometimes it doesn't look right because you've been looking at it too long. I'm going to put a little bit more highlights up here. And I think, I think that's going to do it for a water drop. Perfect. Perfecto. Now we're going to move on to the, the leaves. The first thing we're going to do with the leaves is we're going to start off with a uh, yellow ochre background of, on the leaves. So we're going to take some yellow ochre and then we're going to take some white. And we're going to lighten that up. Because we're because the white that you see, that goes on top. That's the highlight. So we're going to come and we're going to... That's why, that's why I like using an angle brush. I'm going to use an angle brush. And I'm just going to go through... Starting from that base, and just swoop up. And in and, and the painting, you know, you can't get everything that's in there. You can't get everything. So don't worry about getting everything. You're just trying to give your interpretation of, of what you think it's trying to say. So and when you get here, it has a whole bunch, a whole bunch of leaves. Some of them are faded in the distance, and some of them are not. So we're just going to put, let's put some lightly over here and up here. These are real faint. This one's kind of curved right there. What really makes it look awesome is when you start putting the little water droplets in there. Get some more yellow ochre and white. So um, there was another artist I had. He's an American artist. He was a brilliant man. He, um, I think he wanted to be a um, cartoonist or something like that. Or he wanted to be, um, I forgot his name. The next time I have a, um, an art tutorial, we'll, we'll talk about him. But he was so obsessed with trying to impress his family he he okay so here's the deal he was trying so hard to press this i'm gonna put a little water in that because he was trying so hard to impress his family to be a, a you know well-renowned artist 
you know, and he wanted like master uh, masterpiece um, paintings displayed, and that was his goal. He he actually ended up being an illustrator for numerous books and magazines and, and magazines. And to him, that was not that was not sufficient. That was not that was just like a, a letdown to his parents that he was doing that. But the work that he did on those illustrations, he had no and, and it made him famous. It made him famous. Oh my goodness, I can't remember his name. But it made him famous. And all that time he was trying so hard to 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 impress his family, not realizing that he was famous and very creative in his own right. And it's really sad that he had to go to those extremes, but he was very talented. His illustrations, and this was back like I think in the 20s. It could have been the 20s or it could have been the, the 30s or 40s. I can't remember. Forgive me for not remembering the, the era, but I do know he's an American artist and someone probably knows who he is. I just can't think of his name right now. And, um, but that that idea of trying to get recognition of I'm going to come back and put some more white in here. Put some right here because these are supposed to be highlights. The more highlights you put, the more it shows. Okay, so that's good. Okay, and so now what we're going to do. We have the background right here for our um, for our leaves. So now we're going to go through and put some white on them. Or just like underneath them, not so much on them, but kind of underneath them. Because we still want to see the uh, the um, the yellow ochre colors to use that like a, kind of like as a shadow of the other ones fading in the distance. But we definitely have to make sure we get that white coming from underneath here because this is all white. Because I'm, I'm assuming that's where the strongest highlight is. I'm gonna put some up here. But when you get up into here and, and all that, that's that's kind of going to stay yellow, the yellow ochre color because it's not really um, that's supposed to be fading in the distance, so we don't want that to be a focal point up there. Okay, so we got that. Now we're going to come over here and put some over here, too. Trying to put it underneath. Underneath the, um, the ones that are yellow ochre. You know, I'm struggling with this um, white paint. Let me just get some more. But isn't that coming out cool? This is definitely a kitty, a kitty level one painting. But like I always say, it could be taken up to a kitty level two or kitty level three. However big you decide to make it or however uh, much detail you decide to put in it will be the determining factor. I'm going to put some more white up here. So I'm going to put white over here. And if you think, okay, so when you're painting and you have a reference photo, like I have a reference photo and I have it on the screen for you. You know, I used to, um, when I used to watch um, some of the art lessons and stuff, I would see the, see the reference photo. I'm thinking, oh my goodness, I'm like, our painting's going to look like that. And every single time it never really did. And that's because you are not trying to 100% mimic the reference photo. You're using the reference photo as a reference. That's the point. Okay. So we're not going to really put any white up here because that, like I said, that's supposed to be fading to the distance. Okay. Now it is time for our droplets. Okay. So for our droplets, I'm going to use my... um. I'm going to use my my little uh, round brush. Either I'm going to use a little round brush, or if I need to make them bigger, I'm going to use this bigger round brush. So let me start off with the bigger one and see how it goes. Um, we'll take it from there. Okay, this is this is how it works. You start off with kind of like what we did with this one. You start off with a little bit of. You start off in this case. You're actually going to make a white circle, and inside each one of those, you're going to put doxazine purple and blue and actually just a teeny bit of red on some of those just a teeny bit 
And that's what and that's what your raindrops are. That I mean your your water drops. That's it. That's all you're putting in those. So we're gonna go ahead and start putting some in. So we're gonna start off with a little bit of white. We're gonna start off, we're gonna put one right here. Now, don't try to exactly mimic the location of the of the raindrops that are on the photo reference. Do your own thing. Add them, add them wherever you want to add them. Because if you sit there and try to do it exactly like the reference photo, you'll lose your mind. Trust me, I'm saying that because I tried to do it and that was not cool. Got little tiny ones. A little tiny, we're just gonna put little dots. So we've got that one. Let's come over here. Got some little ones over here. Make big ones, make little ones. Try not to make them all the same. Okay, so I've got some. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna add some um, doxazine purple. We're gonna, well actually, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna add, um, we're pretty much gonna mimic what this is. We have the blue and then we have the purple on top of it. So we're gonna get our, we're gonna make some blue mixture. We're gonna add some, um, the um, yellow little blue, we're gonna add some white to it. We're gonna come here and on the bottom, we're gonna put the blue and then again, top, we're gonna try to put some purple in there. And I wish I could have found a little, um, the little bulk of sponges, because if we did, we just went, you know, tap, 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 and we would have been done. But I don't think they make them that small. Or you can even go so far as using, like, the tip of one of your brushes. Like, you can go through and you can do this. You can dip it in there and go like that. But as you can see, this one's not a good. Or you can use a, sty a stylus. I mean, stylus to do it. So I'm just going to go through and put some little tiny, for the little tiny droplets. In between oh that one made a big one so you can just go in and do it you can just go in and do it like that too because you don't want to be sitting here making a whole bunch of little tiny dots on your canvas you can actually use you know I have a brush that can, can do that if I had a flat brush that would that would work perfectly but I'm coming up short and finding one so you can actually you know what I'm gonna use a pencil So you can actually go and do like that. And I used to do this a lot when I did um, toll painting. I never tried to make perfect circles. I never tried to make per perfect circles on my own. I always try to um, you find shortcuts. So if you don't have if you don't have a stylus or you don't have the bokeh, use um, use the tip of something. But there's different ways you can do this. I just don't want you sitting there trying to um, put a whole bunch of dots to make uh, raindrops. It'll drive you insane. So this is perfect. Because our goal is that we just want to learn how to make the raindrops. Okay? And these other ones back here, they're, in the, they're faded in the background, so you can't, you can't really even see them. Okay, so we got that. So let's go through and add our blue to those. We're going to add our blue to the bottom of those. And then we're going to go back and add our purple to the top of them and then a little bit of red. Because that seems to be the um, the pattern. Kind of like uh, you got the blue here, you can see then you got the purple on the top and then you have the white for the highlight. And that's no different on the, all the other little. And these little tiny ones, I'm just, just coming, I'm not even being um, perfect. I'm just coming and putting little tiny implications of the blue in all of those. Now, if we were doing one of these lessons on my um, on my website, one of my downloadable lessons, we would definitely take our time and do everything precisely. 
but I'm trying to keep these lessons, these uh, YouTube lessons to a minimum. I want to keep them under two hours if I can. Okay, so we got the blue on those. And now we're going to add the and now we're going to add the purple. Now the purple, we're not going to really add any white to it because we kind of want it to be dark. We want it to be dark. So we're just going to go in and put it up here on the top like that. Kind of like it the way it is right there. See that? So we're just going to kind of go do that. And then we can always come back and refine the white. And isn't that crazy how that's going to be? A, those are raindrops or water drops? Let's just call them raindrops because that's probably exactly what they are. I choose to call them rain. I choose to call them raindrops. We want to try to keep keep that keep it circular if we can. When I when I saw this, I just fell in love with it. I'm like, yep, I want to do that. I totally want to do it. We have a, we have a I have another water lesson that we're going to be doing. It's um. It's a rose floating on water. We're going to do that one. That one's going to be fun. And I've already done a lesson um, on how to paint glass. It's actually one where, um, where there's a glass of wine. I don't, I don't really drink, but, you know, and, and, you know, Valentine's, I was making a Valentine's Day lesson. And um, I just know a lot of people, they just find it romantic to have a glass of wine. And there's nothing wrong with that. So some of these I'm going to come back and I'm going to refine them because they're they're losing their form. Like these two, these right here, they're losing their form. But you just want to put that dark on top of the blue. Just trying to get that purple on top of there. Sorry if my hand's in the way. Like I said, I'm left-handed, and sometimes it's hard to, to keep the hand out the way. Now, back to my website. Um, some of you've already, you already know because you've already watched my other uh, tutorial, so you know what's going on. But if you want um, more detailed lessons, like there's some horse paintings. There's a couple of, of Volkswagen buses that I'm going to be painting. Actually, the Volkswagen bus is the very first thing that I'm going to be putting on my, uh, my website. For my first downloadable lesson and um, if you want to paint that it's one of my downloadable lessons that you can purchase and download unfortunately it won't be um, available on YouTube because I just feel like those type of lessons they need to be um, you, you uh, I encourage you to take your time to do them and that means I need to be allowed the time the time to, to show you how to do it without restrictions so you can get the best the, the best um, outcome that you can get. And that's that's not possible on YouTube because YouTube, I don't want you sitting around for hours upon hours upon hours watching a YouTube lesson. Okay, so like I said, some of those, I'm gonna get some blue and then, and then I'm gonna add a little bit of red and some of them, cause like I said, some of them have red and then um, I'm, I'm gonna outline them with white again. Okay, so that one's losing its blue. So I'm trying to come back and put it back in. I'm trying to make it a circle. And actually, you know, if you think about it, are all raindrop circles though? I mean, you know, it it, it depends on gra the, the gravity. I'm like, is, is it is it something pulling it down, weighting it down? I mean, it just depends on what the shape's going to look like. We'll say that that's two raindrops. Go that way. Just don't want it losing its form. So that's good. Probably put a little bit more purple. We'll say that this is two raindrops. How about that? And let's say that this one's two. Put some more purple on those. And then I'm going to outline them in some more white and put a couple in the background. And can you believe it that that's it for this lesson? This I'm going to add some more purple to. 
and I'm going to outline it in white. It'll look like a circle. Put some on that one too. Sorry, you couldn't see that there. Put some up here on this one. Let's see how we're doing on this, these over here. Yep. All right. So I'm going to try to outline some more of them in white and try to put some faded ones back here. So let me get my white, try to outline some of these a little bit better. So like that one, I'm using, oh, that's too heavy. Let's go a little bit. Use the tip of it. I just want to give it form. And if you're not persnickety like I am, you can just leave them as is. I just want to try to at least give them some kind of form. The ones that have lost their form. But yeah, um, feel free to go into my website, www.kittycrowcreations.com. And um, you can become a member for free. Go in and become a member. Um, set yourself up an account and uh, and upload your some of your artwork so we can see what it looks like. Maybe we can have start having some contests and maybe we can start doing some um, some activities and games and have some very thought provoking questions about art history, which as you know is my history is one of my favorite subjects, but um, uh, use it or lose it. I know that I haven't really been focusing on my history as much as I want to. I used to be all knowing about World War One and World War Two because that was my obsession. Is what caused those? What were the catalysts for those for those wars? And um, yes, and that's why you know when I do some more of my lessons, I want to also talk about the history of different artists and. And do and try to do some of their do some of their paintings and talk about the the history behind behind all of that why they painted what they painted. There's always a story behind something. Okay, I think that's that's pretty much good on the water the water droplets. I could sit here and work with this all day. Like I really feel like this needs this needs some more at the top. Because after all, the highlight is what makes it really, really look like it's a, a water droplet or a raindrop. I'm trying to put some on the top there. But can you imagine how, I mean, something like this seems simple. Can you imagine if you made it on like a, an 18 by 24 canvas, what it would look like? I think it would just be amazing. This one needs some outlining over here, so it looks like a And really, the key is to try to make the the to make the outlines not too thick. But anyway, let me go back and just put a little. There's a couple that had red in it, and um and there must be something in the background, whatever this photo reference was, that had red. So I'm just going to put the little red where. There was an indication of it. Just a few that had red. So I'm going to put. Okay, so we're going to do the ones up here. And basically, I'm going to use some zinc white and make it look like there it is. And um, just some zinc white and that yellow ochre color. Let me see. Because everything back here is, um, let me make sure, that's too dark. We don't want a whole bunch of the colors showing. We want mainly almost nothing showing. Just look like little 
little dots, little circles. And I'm just scrubbing it in there because we, we don't really want it to look like anything. We just wanted to give it, and we're going to come and put a little bit of faded blue in those too. So it'll look like. These are faded. You can you can actually leave them out if you want to because they don't really add anything to the painting. But I'm always curious. I want to see how something's going to turn out. Okay, so now I'm going to put a little bit of blue, but fade it blue. Let's see, I'm going to have to get my my zinc white. And some blue, but more zinc white than anything. And then try to put that inside here, make it look like it could have been a water drop. I'm trying to dry brush it in there because we don't really want it to say much. Okay, as an artist, I'm not filling this red, so I'm going to cover it with the purple. I feel like it took away from my um, my raindrops. And that one over there needs more blue. I'm not filling that red. But anyway, that American artist, um, I promise as soon as we have our next tutorial, I'm going to try to I'm going to try to remember his name and tell you who he was. But I couldn't believe how he just had an obsession with trying to prove to his family that he was an artist and he was artistic, not realizing all the time he was more famous than anybody in his family via his his um, illustrations that he was doing for the books. And I was I, I that kind of blew my mind that he was trying hard to be something that he already was. And what I took away from that, that whole whole story, studying that history, is that be yourself. Don't try to be somebody else. And if people don't like what you're doing or what you have to offer, then that's okay. The, the, the point is, are you happy with what you're doing and who you are? That's what it's about. Okay, so I'm just trying to put some more of that purple in there. And I put a little white around that one, and we're done. We're done. Ooh, my, brush, my brush went flying away. Put a little more white around that. I feel like it's. But you can sit here if you want to, and if you want to do every every little drop perfectly, and you want to do the the each raindrop. That's fine. But really, you need to when you do the outline. I, I probably should have chosen a. a, a a thinner brush but you can make the outline a little bit thinner you know it'll make it like it's like look at this one how thin the outline is on on that water that water drop droplet or raindrop whatever but that's pretty much it that's our our um dandelion with the with the water drops i'm going to go ahead and sign it and date it and this was this i thought this was kind of fun it was nice and simple but it's really cute and you know practice it and then maybe uh and maybe paint it on a uh a 16 by 20 and then hang it up somewhere and it'll it'll look perfect i, I just love the colors that i love the color combination so i hope you enjoyed it this has been fun like i said feel free to tune in um to my um on my on my website become a member create some blogs um i have some um I have a video on there on how to resize your uh, your traceables. I have all my traceables and my reference photos on the website. But most importantly, have fun doing art and explore your inner artist. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Remember to hit the subscription button, the notification button, and if you have not done so already. And thank you for tuning in and have a great day. Bye for now.